Malware today does not make noise. It does not throw up funny errors. So how do you know if there's malware on a computer or on your computer? Well, the first step is always to look at network activity and to be able to identify where your computer is connecting to. It could be an attacker's domain. It could be a malicious server. And if you're not careful, an attacker could be controlling your computer right now. I'm going to show you how that happens with a live example. So here we have what you like to call an async rat or a remote access tool. So what's a remote access tool? Well, a few things, key logging, file search, remote audio and camera access, and of course, taking all that data and sending it over, which is exfiltration. But let's take a deeper look into how this malware operates and how systems can be controlled, what kind of software is actually running on your computer. So if we see what happens when this malware is executed, on the right, we have a list of processes that are created. So SVC host is a typical system network process, nothing suspicious. Similarly, wscript.exe is also a Microsoft process. So is PowerShell and Command Prompt. But if we take a look at what is actually being executed here, open up the PowerShell shell module, you can see there's a very confusing list of characters that uh, doesn't really make any sense, looks like complete gibberish. But that's because this is base 64. This is a form of encoded text. It's a code like the Da Vinci code. It's a secret. And you won't be able to figure out what this is until you decode it. So what we're going to do is we're going to copy and paste this into a base 64 decoder. We're going to auto detect the character set and hit decode. And now you get some hints into what this is actually trying to do on your system. This may not make sense to those of you who are not into programming, but I just want you to look at one piece of text here, and that is C users public downloads extra columella.jsc. So this is a particular file that it's referencing, probably the malware that it's going to download and use in order to control your computer. And in fact, if we go down here, JS of course is a JavaScript and we do see command prompt here, referencing that file in our public downloads folder. Now, once all of this executes, of course, we can look at this column on the left, which shows connections to a domain used for C2 activity. C2 refers to command and control. It means a server where an attacker is able to control their victim's computers. How do we know this? Of course, you can open it and it's gonna tell you what exact server it's connecting to. So this IP address over here and this port is likely where your data is being sent and how the attacker is connecting and controlling your computer. Now, this whole process is a bit easier to understand if we try to get a tax report. So if we pull that up over here, you can see that uh, it gives us a bird's eye view of the different activities conducted. And if we go down here, there is jsc.exe, which is the ultimate malware that is controlling your computer. But the way it's launched is via PowerShell, WScript, all of these Windows components that are not malicious they're just being used by the attackers. This kind of weaponization of Windows is the most common trick that attackers will use today. Now, if you go back and try to look at different system events, so for example, files that have been modified, we can see that, uh, again, we have a binary referenced in PowerShell. We've got um, the file that we just found in our decoded script, the JS or JavaScript that was in our public downloads folder. So yeah, a big way to secure your computer today is actually to disable all sorts of JavaScript, get rid of PowerShell execution, make sure your computer is not set to execute PowerShell scripts by default, and really lock down a lot of the vulnerabilities that Windows comes with. It might make your life a little bit difficult if you're programming or using certain tools, but I dare say most users probably don't need to execute PowerShell scripts, execute JavaScript, use WScript. Some installers might, but um, kind of unlikely. So coming back to the tool that you can use to observe this kind of network activity, here we're looking at TCP view, which is part of the Sys internal suite. This is available directly from Microsoft. So if you do a search for Sys internals, you're going to find a list of tools that Microsoft prescribes project by Mark Rusinovich. And it's a great way to get a deeper look at what's actually happening on your system. As you can see, we have 
Steam, Discord, sure, a bunch of stuff connecting to the network. And we have a list of addresses that we can see that we're connecting to. Now, each of these addresses, you could manually look up if you wanted to. So if you right click here, you can copy this information and you can try to just select the remote address part and do a search on a platform like Varstotal to see if this is a known malicious IP. Now, sometimes you can also do a right click and who is, and that's gonna tell you who owns the domain, if it's a domain you're connecting to, but um, usually that's not gonna work. So you'll have to go and look for this IP address in some database to see if it's associated with malware. And don't be fooled by the process name, because even if the process name is something that is totally safe, like it's a Windows process, it could be weaponized by attackers. So in the future, I think a lot of actual malware forensics is going to come down to identifying malware infrastructure, C2, as we call it, noticing the IPs that your system is connecting to versus the actual process, because it might be the exact same system process that in one case is downloading an update from Microsoft, in another case is downloading a rat from a malware server. So I hope the information in this video helps. I do want to give a shout out to Any.Run, who were the sponsors of many of our videos in this one. They've given us access to their amazing platform, which you can get as well using link in description. If you want to do your own malware analysis and look into async rats or ransomware in a virtualized environment and have access to all of these awesome malware analysis tools, the report that we just saw. At the moment, they have a promotion going on for the next few days. So if you're interested in trying out Any.Run, do check out the link in description. You can get a plan that's free for non-commercial use, but they've also got some really nice deals right now. Oh, and they've also just introduced Android analysis. So if you want to run Android malware, this is a great way to try it out. So you can virtualize an Android system just like you would Windows. Really cool feature. I'm looking forward to trying this out more. And do like and share this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you all so much for watching. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.